Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So in this video, we're going to show how you appreciate your employees when you know you've got the best. We're going to take the Shea Poco, we're going to do some bandsaw work, and we're going to get started. So when I say that I have the best technicians working for me, I truly mean it. They are an outstanding group of guys. Always willing to go the extra mile. They have a great team ethic. And I thought, what better way to, to acknowledge that than to make them something out of the Hinkle Shop and put it on this YouTube channel. Now, obviously, we all know that golden rule right there. So please like and subscribe. What I'm doing here is taking the edge off of these pieces of wood. Now, these things, these wood, this wood came from um, a pallet or a crate. Here we're using the hedgehog to make sure that I have good contact with the fence. The reason I have that uh, level clamped to my fence is to increase the length of it. These boards were a little bit cattywampus and if you keep one edge along that uh, level until you're done with the cutoff you'll get one straight edge that you can flip over and cut the other way. Now here we're completing the glue up with my new Bessie clamps that my wife got me for Christmas. And as always, we're going to use Carbco Maker Plus because it is the best. If you're going to make something for the best texture, use the best software along with the best CNC. Speaking of best, here's my best friend again. You want to help me with this? good helper but he didn't stick around very long. Now I use several different methods to clamp my stock down to the CNC table but those little black plastic clamps often more often than not get used and they're from CNC Pawn CNC I'm sorry and I'll leave a link to Pawn CNC in the description below. That's another little gadget we use from Pawn CNC and it's held in by magnets and it is an awesome dust collector. Check it out. Now that end mill, that was almost not worth having that end mill do the roughing passes. It only ran for 20 seconds and it was time for a bit change. We're using just a standard 60 degree V bit to create this. Well, we're making a plaque here for these guys. And there's a mesmerizing effect when you're watching a CNC. Obviously I've sped this up quite a bit. But when you own one of these things and you're watching it work, it's again, it's mesmerizing. You'll at times you'll stand there and just watch it work for no reason other than it's just fun to watch that thing go around and around and create something from nothing. This time we used three changes. We changed the first time from an eighth inch end mill to the V bit. And once these letters are cut out, we switch back to that eighth inch one more time to cut the profile and to cut the center out. And you'll see what I mean by cutting the center out here in just a second. That's what I mean by the center. We use three tabs to hold that in place and I use three tabs to hold the outside in place. Kind of a crazy pattern there. And we're all done. Let's head over to the bandsaw. Now as I said, I put in three tabs. And when I got to the bandsaw, I couldn't see the tabs. I couldn't see where they actually were. So with kid gloves, being very careful, I cut in directly to the edge of the plaque just to free up large sections so that the blade would be able to get in after I located the tabs that I wanted to cut off. Some people use an orbital tool, a multi-tool to cut these off. I don't. I have a bandsaw. I put it to work. It's much faster and I just I just prefer that. Again taking big chunks of wood off of here. Being careful not to hit the plaque. And I believe we have one more tab right here. No, nope, I was wrong. There's one more hiding in there somewhere. Ah, there it is. 
again being extremely careful not to hit that plaque and the final piece comes loose. I'll give you a little thing. Who's the most important guy? <laughs> Not really. Those technicians do far more work than I do in a day. Now some of you might have thought that I was going to put a picture in there like an employee of the month. Not the case. We're going to use a mirror because they're all just as important as each other. One technician is no more important than the other on my team. Quick measurement. Now what I'm going to do is inlay that mirror in the back of this piece. I'm going to do this by hand. I could have done a two-sided carve and used the CNC for this. But sometimes you just have to go back old school to remember what it was like before you had one. And it's fun to do this with a router, really. I didn't put any guides on this. I just laid it out. And after I did all this work with a ruler, I thought to myself, why wouldn't you just put the piece of glass on there and trace around it? So eventually that's what I did. All this ruler and pencil work just to set the glass on and realize that was much better. <laughs> and right here I do it. And of course, after all that measuring, the inside line was too close. So we take it off with a pencil eraser. That's why we don't use a ballpoint pen in woodworking, because we all make mistakes. Good to go. Let's get out a router and see if we can tear this thing up. Put some clamps on it to hold it in place. Otherwise, as soon as you hit that with the router, it's going to take off like a rocket and rip a hole in the side of your plaque. And here we go, free-handed. Actually didn't come out too bad doing it freehanded as well. Steady as she goes here. You don't want to drink too much coffee right before you're going to try to do this. And you can see my buddy stuck his head in there again just to see if I was doing it correctly. And after you've got it all hogged away, the next thing is clean up. So you grab the vacuum and just clean up all them sawdust, all that mess. And we'll confirm that the hole is big enough here in just a second. If my wife could only see me now using that vacuum on a rug. Let's not give her any ideas. Moment of truth. Hey, it fits. Awesome. Time to put some finish on it. Now some of you might think, why didn't he use Aura Mask? Well, the reason I didn't use Aura Mask was because I just didn't use Aura Mask. This is just as fast, in some cases, than to play around putting the Aura Mask on and doing the finish work. A little gold spray paint in those letters. A little fight with the tape to get off your fingers. And then we'll hit it with the sander here to clean off the excess paint. And then it'll be on to the stain work. By putting the blue painter's tape on, it limits the amount of cleanup, obviously, that I've got to do. I could have sprayed over the whole thing, but there's no point in creating more work than necessary when you're making a project. 
take the vacuum again, clean out the dust. I'll take a rag and we'll wipe it off. Make sure that we've got it all clean and free of dust on the surface. Looking pretty good so far. And then we'll start a little bit of very delicate stain work. When I say delicate, you don't have to be really, really careful. You just don't want to have the stain dripping into those holes or into the letters. But that's what we got right there. Not too shabby. Let's look at it once with a mirror in it. Okay, everybody, there you have it. Another video. Don't forget, I've got the best technicians going out there. I've also got the best YouTube viewers out there. Look in the mirror. You can find out who they are. Anyway, I hope you got something out of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, give us a like, subscribe, and a share. And we'll catch you on the next one.